In the previous video, I mentioned that components are reusable. So you can create a component that returns any HTML you want to and include it in any part of your application. For example, let's say we need to reuse this greet component. All you have to do is include the greet tag as many times as you want to. If I duplicate it twice, save the file and take a look at the browser, you can see Hello Vishwas displayed three times. Although we are reusing the greet component, duplicating it three times like we have done here isn't really helpful, is it? What would be great is if we could pass in the name of the person we want to greet. That way, reusing the same component, we could greet three different people instead of greeting Vishwas three times. This is where component props come into picture. Props are custom attributes you can register on a component which allow the component content to be dynamic. Let's understand how props work in this video. Our intention here is to pass a name from the app component to the greet component and render that name in the browser. To specify props for a component, we add custom attributes. To specify a name prop, we simply add the name attribute. To the attribute, we assign a value. Let's go with the name Bruce. Similarly, let's add the attribute on the other two components as well. Name is equal to Clark and name is equal to Diana. Okay, so we are sending some data to this greet component. But how do we retrieve that value in the greet component? Now that is a quick two-step process. The first step, we declare a variable in the script section using the export keyword. So script tags, and within the script tag, export let name. Here, name should match the custom attribute we are passing in. The second step is to bind this variable to the markup. So instead of Vishwas, we use curly braces and bind name to the HTML. If you now save the file and take a look at the browser, you should be able to see Hello Bruce, Clark and Diana. Hopefully, the reusability of components makes much more sense now that we understand props. We can define the markup and pass in the appropriate data that we want the component to use. Here, app component is referred to as the parent component and greet component is referred to as the child component. Let's add another prop to make sure we have a good understanding of how it works. I'm going to add a second attribute, hero name, and assign the appropriate values. Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. And in greet component, let's declare hero name. Export let hero name. And now in the markup, hello name, followed by also known as hero name. Now, if we take a look at the browser, you can see that the output is what we expect it to be. At the moment, in our app component, we are passing in static values as props. But we can also assign dynamic values to props. That is, we can bind values defined in the script section to props in a component. Let me create two constants, const name is equal to Vishwas and const channel is equal to code evolution. We can now include another greet component and bind the two constants as props using curly braces. So I'm going to make a copy of this. Name is going to be equal to name within curly braces and hero name is going to be equal to channel within curly braces. Since the prop name and value is the same, you can specify the prop using the shorthand syntax. 
So just name and curly braces. If we take a look at the browser, we have Hello Vishwas, aka Code Evolution. Our dynamic props work as expected. The next point about props is specifying default values. In a child component, you can assign a value to a prop. For example, hero name, we can set it to default. And in the parent component, when invoking the last greet component, we can leave out this hero name prop. If we now take a look at the browser, you can see that the default prop value is used by the child component. Hello Vishwas, aka default. The last point you need to be aware of regarding props is how to spread props. Let's say we have an object with name and hero name as properties. So const obj is equal to an object, name is Barry and hero name is flash. If you have to greet the flash, you would invoke another greet component and set name is equal to object dot name and hero name is equal to object dot hero name. While this works, Svelte provides an easier way to provide an object as props by using the spread operator. So on the greet component, we can use curly braces and within curly braces, spread object. So dot 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 obj. If you now take a look at the browser, you can see hello Barry aka flash, which is the output we expect. Now, of course, we only have two properties in the object right now, but you can probably understand the value this syntax brings to the table when you have an object with five to 10 properties. Instead of specifying all five to 10 attributes, you can simply spread the object on the component. All right, this is pretty much the basic idea behind props in Svelte. In the parent component, when invoking the child, you can include additional attributes. In the child component, use the export declaration for all the custom attributes and then bind them to the markup using curly braces. Props are a key to reusing components in Svelte, so please make sure you understand them well. All right, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next video.